Hi, I'm Richard, one of the developer advocates at Chainlink Labs, and in this video, we will be discussing self-custody wallets for your ERC-20 tokens. We'll be taking a look at three popular options, MetaMask, Trezor, and Ledger. The latter two are physical hardware devices, and that means we'll be taking a look at how to set up those hardware devices as well in this video. But before we dive into that, let's discuss exactly what a self-custody wallet is. When we think about our current internet landscape, a question that often comes up is who owns your data? And in the Web3 space, ownership comes down to your private keys. The person who owns the keys owns the account. There's two main types of wallets. The first are custodial wallets, where someone manages it for you. Think something similar to your bank. Your bank is in charge of your money and holding on to your assets. In that case, they're the custodian of your assets. Within the crypto space, there are places where a wallet is a custodial wallet like this, where a company is maintaining your assets for you. Let's start by taking a look at MetaMask. It comes as both a browser extension and a standalone application for your mobile device. We'll be taking a look at the browser extension in this tutorial. We can download it for our browser, Chrome in my case. It'll take us to the Chrome web store and I can add it to my browser from here. Once it's added to my browser, I'll be able to get started with MetaMask. I can choose whether or not to share my information with them. And then I'm presented with this screen. If you already have a secret recovery phrase, choose that option, but you probably don't. Well, let's look at how to create a brand new wallet. We'll click create wallet and we'll need to enter in a password. This password is not a password that has anything to do with our actual wallet itself. This password is a password to protect our wallet in MetaMask. So we'll create a password and then we're presented with this screen, which will give us information about how to secure our wallet. The key takeaways are over here on the right. You'll be presented with 12 words that are essentially the master key to your wallet and your funds. Remember, whoever controls your keys has access to everything in your wallet. You should save the secret recovery phrase, those 12 words somewhere secure, like a safety deposit box or writing it down and storing it somewhere safe possibly multiple places, because if you lose those 12 words and you need to recover your private key, you'll be out of luck. So you need to ensure that you have those 12 words written down and stored someplace safe, that they cannot fall into the hands of anyone who you do not want to have access to your wallet. Now, I will show you the 12 words that I will be using for this tutorial. Do not let people see these words. These are the master key to your account. I plan on throwing this wallet away. I'm never going to use it. So that's why it's okay for me to share them with you, but make sure that you keep your 12 words safe. You'll need to write these down. So take a moment to write them down, store them somewhere safe. If you have a password manager that you trust, that's one option. Again, lots of people prefer to keep them completely off of their devices, stored somewhere in a physical medium. Once you have these written down, you can click next and you will then need to confirm your 12 words. It's important that you confirm the words and, and confirm them in the proper order. Those two things together are what allow MetaMask to generate your private key. All right, so I've confirmed my 12 words. Once I click confirm, it'll say congratulation. You have a wallet. You're all done. So from here, you are taken to your account. This is your home within MetaMask. It shows you all of your different balances. It allows you to do things like change networks if you want to do that. That's a little bit outside this tutorial, but we could do that if we needed to. Your account is here along with your address. If you need your address, you can copy it to the clipboard. You can also view it if you need to, and you can send, swap, and buy assets as well. One thing that is a best practice when sending an asset is to make sure that you are 100% positive you're using the correct address. With self-custody wallets, you are in control of everything. And when you choose to take an action, it's done. There's no going back. So keep that in mind. One thing that many people do is they will send a very small transaction first to ensure that they are sending it to the correct place before they send their larger transaction. That is the best practice when it comes to sending transactions to new or unknown addresses.
So from here, you have a MetaMask wallet set up. Let's take a look at another wallet. And this time it's going to be a hardware wallet. That means it's a physical device that we'll be using. In this case, we'll be looking at the Trezor wallet. If you head to Trezor.io, you can purchase one of their wallets. They have two models currently, the Model T and the Model 1. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the Model 1, but the Model T should be very similar. It's highly recommended that you purchase the wallet directly from Trezor themselves. So again, that's Trezor.io, purchase the wallet, and once you've received it and plugged it in, you should see something that looks a little bit like this. Here we have the Model 1, and we've just plugged it in. It says, welcome, please visit Trezor.io slash start. If you head to that address, you will see the option to download or use the Trezor suite for web. I recommend downloading the application because you'll need to do a few steps when setting up the actual wallet itself. Once you've downloaded it, then you can open the suite. The suite looks something like this. It'll ask you first for a security check. And this is important. When you receive the box, it should look something similar to this. They're saying to note the hologram and to make sure the box doesn't look like it's been tampered with. Now, I opened this box and so the bottom is broken. If you saw something like this when you received your device, you'd want to contact them immediately. But in this case, everything was good. I opened the device and plugged it in. So let's set up the actual device itself. As is often the case when you first receive a device, you'll need to update the firmware. So we'll go ahead and install that now. And once the firmware is installed, we'll need to disconnect and reconnect the device. So simply unplug it and plug it back in. And then we can click continue. Now, again, as with most wallets, you have the option to recover. This is where those secret words come in but we're creating a new wallet for the first time. And we'll get a list of English words, as it says here, that we'll need to recover our wallet. This is our backup. The same principles apply that we talked about earlier. These words are the master key to your wallet. So keep them in a safe place. You're going to need to record them. Do it in a safe manner. Remember, anyone who has access to these words has access to your wallet. Do you really want to create a new wallet? Yes, we'll confirm. The two buttons here on the bottom are going to be how we interact with the device itself. We'll say that it's almost ready. We'll create a backup. And in order to create our backup, the treasure is going to generate a list of words for us that we need to write down. So let's begin that process. We need to click each one of these to make sure that we understand the instructions. We'll be checking the backup device settings. We're not going to take a copy and we're going to keep our backup secured so that we don't share it with anyone. So let's begin backing up. On the treasure itself, we will see the words. Again, remember, this is key. I'm sharing this with you because I plan on throwing this wallet away. I'll create a new one on this device so that I can use my hardware wallet with a secure list of words. So we'll walk through each of these words and I'll write them down, all of the words that are generated. Okay, and once we've recorded all the words, it will then give me the option to check them. So I will go through and double check each of the words and I've recorded them correctly. All right, I've recorded my words. I'm sure that everything is correct. Now I'll create a pin code. This is similar to the password that we created for MetaMask. It's a way to protect your private key on the device itself. So we'll set up our pin. Now, one thing that's interesting is we're interacting with both the computer and the device itself. So here we can confirm that we want to set up a new pin and we can enter our pin. Now, the way that this works is the digits displayed on our device are in a specific order. In my case, it's 421 on the top row. So if I want to pick 1, 2, 3, I wouldn't click 1, 2, 3 as my pin. I would choose based on their location here. So 1 is over here, 2 is there, and 3 is down here. 
That's not a very good pin. I recommend choosing a better pin, but in this case, we can see again, the order of the numbers has shuffled around. So one is here, two is up in the middle, and three is over here. That allows us to create the pin on our device. Our pin has been set, we've recorded our secret seed phrase, and we're good to go. We can activate specific coins that we would like to activate. Uh, we'll pick Ethereum and Bitcoin for now, and we'll complete our setup. All right, our treasure is now set up. Let's take a look at what the suite looks like. You can choose between a standard wallet with no passphrase and a hidden wallet with a passphrase. One nice thing to remember about a hidden wallet is that even if your seed phrase is compromised, a hidden wallet gives you an extra layer of security. You have to know your passphrase as well. That's recommended. It's an extra layer of security. That does mean it's going to be an extra layer of friction for you, but that's the recommended thing. So create a passphrase here. And again, it'll give you an idea of how strong it is. Create a passphrase that is unique and strong to this wallet. Once we've entered in that, we will be prompted to follow some instructions on our device itself. It's asking us if we want to access the hidden wallet, and we'll confirm. You can see here that that's the passphrase I entered. It's not very strong. Again, this is for demo purposes. You should create a strong passphrase. We'll use this passphrase and there we go, we've created a hidden wallet now. In order to access our wallet, we'll need to enter that passphrase and confirm. We will access our hidden wallet again and we can see now that our wallet is ready to use. If we wanted to enable more coins, we could do that here, but you can see we have Bitcoin and Ethereum set up currently. So at this point, we are ready to receive, and if we had coins in our wallet, send them as well. Again, a reminder, anytime that you're going to be sending coins, you're going to want to ensure that one, the address is correct, double, triple, check that thing like crazy, and two, make sure if it is a new address you haven't sent to before, that you send a small transaction first, to ensure that everything is working and you have the right address. So with that, we have our Trezor wallet set up. This device will store the private keys for your crypto wallet. It's an added layer of security. Once this device is disconnected from the computer, there's no way to access your wallet without this device. We can plug it back in and see what it looks like to log back into it. Once we plug it in, we can see that we have in here, we need to enter our dashboard. We have the random values here, they're mixed up. Remember in my example, I used one, two, three as my pin. You want to make sure that you use a strong pin and then we used the hidden wallet. So again, remember, we have a password for that as well. It'll prompt us to access the hidden wallet. And just like that, we're back in to our wallet. All right, that's how to set up a Trezor hardware wallet. Let's take a look at how to set up a Ledger wallet next. All right, the last wallet that we'll be taking a look at today is the Ledger hardware wallet, specifically the Nano S. If you head to ledger.com, you can order from them directly. The Nano S Plus is what we'll be looking at today. And again, it is recommended to order directly from Ledger, from the manufacturer when ordering a hardware wallet. Once your hardware wallet comes and you take it out of its box, you should follow the same process again of ensuring the packaging looks like it hasn't been opened or anything like that. Any sort of odd tamper marks, anything like that and you should contact Ledger immediately. It's never a safe bet to think that a tampered wallet is secure. So once you have your wallet in your possession, it should look something like this. And when you plug it in, you'll see this screen.
it'll say welcome to your wallet and you'll see here on the top there are two buttons. You'll use the right button to continue. It asks you to go to ledger.com slash start. So let's go there now. You'll be prompted to download the application for your operating system. It's called Ledger Live and it will allow you to interact with your wallet. Once we've done that, we can press right and see what the next instruction is. It says to use the buttons to navigate the menus, press both to select and hold both to access settings and more. So we'll need to start Ledger Live to continue. All right, we've got Ledger Live up and running and now we need to get started. It asks you to pick which one you have. In this case, I have the Nano S Plus. I'll select that. And yes, it's a new Nano, and so we want to set it up. We will need a private key in order to access everything. The private key is essentially what is your wallet, and it will live on your Nano S. You can own your private key. You can stay offline. It works as cold storage. So again, having a device like this or the treasure will enable you to store your private key away from your computer. So let's set up the Nano. Okay, we're ready to go. We have our pin. We have a safe place to do this, and we have about 30 minutes of time. We turn on the Nano, we plug it in, and we say set up as new device. It asks you to ensure that you know that you need to set up a pin code, so we'll do that now. So pressing the left and right buttons to change digits will set it up as a new device. So again, we have on the screen what we're doing, and then we have on the device what we're doing. So again, the way this works is we have two buttons, a left and a right. Those let us move left and right through the menus. If we push both, then that will enable us to select that value. So we'll need to choose a pin with four to eight digits. In this case, I'm going to choose a pin with just a few digits. And I'll make my pin very simple. I can use the left and right buttons to change the value. Once I have one that's selected, I push both to input it. Again, this is not a very good pin. You should pick a stronger pin than this. And here we can pick the check mark or we could pick more digits. For the case in this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it simple and just go with four. And now we'll need to confirm our pin. So we'll need to enter it in again. Then we will see our recovery phrase. So we'll need to write this down. It'll give us 24 words similar to the treasure and we'll need to write down these values as well. So let's go through them now. It gives us information about how we should write them down, how we should store them and we press both buttons to continue. So again, this is going to be all of my secret phrase. This is not something that you would want to share with anyone. I'll be setting this up as a new device to use it in the future. I'll be throwing away the wallet I'm creating right now. So keep that in mind. So now I'll record each of these words. All right, I've written down my 24 words and now it gives me the option to verify them. One thing to note, when it comes to the ledger, they give you a option to use their recovery sheets. These are pretty nice. They're just a simple way for you to re record your 24 words. Uh, again, this is something that you'd want to store in a safe place and maybe in multiple places because anyone who has access to this will have full access to your account. So now I can verify my words. I'll push both buttons. So now I'll need to confirm my phrase. This is a bit different. I have to pick the correct word for word one. This is to ensure that you have all of your words recorded in the correct order. So you'll select the word and then you'll push both buttons to confirm. So I'll go through and confirm all of my words now. All right, I've confirmed all 24 words. The device believes that I know the words because I've proven that I can remember them. And it says to store that in a safe place. If it gets lost, everything is lost. Never share it with anyone and Ledger will never ask you for it. This is something that's important to point out. No one should ever ask you for your seed phrase for those 24 or 12 words that are the thing that creates your private key. 
No one should ever ask you for that. You should never give that to anyone. So press both buttons to continue. And in just a moment, we should have a bit more to do. Our device is now ready. Awesome. So we can go to the dashboard. We'll push both buttons and we'll see that we have this option to install apps. So back on the Ledger Live app here, gives us the different steps to walk through uh, and lets us know about our recovery phrase. It's essentially telling us everything that we just did on the device itself. Uh, it's walking us through everything, letting us know all of the information, lets us know when we're done, and we are good to go. So we'll check the Nano. And you'll notice we're prompted if we want to allow Ledger Manager. So what this is doing is this is allowing us to interact with our computer. We have the choice of denying or allowing. We'll select allow. You can see on the screen now that everything is good to go. At this point, we'll need to agree to a terms of use and now we can add an account. What exactly are accounts? Accounts are essentially different tokens and different chains that we can interact with on our device. So we'll add an account, and from here, we can choose a crypto asset. There's lots of different choices. We could choose something like the link token on Ethereum. We'll need to add an Ethereum account in order to interact with this. So what the account is that we're adding is Ethereum in order to interact with the link token. The first thing is it's checking to make sure everything is good. And on our device, we can see now that it's installing. And now we can open up the Ethereum app itself. And this is how we would approve and interact with the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, it looks like we need to uninstall and reinstall it as an update. So we can go ahead and do that. This is probably similar to the Trezor wallet where we needed to update the firmware because we never got prompted to do that when we first turned on our device. Yes, there is a firmware update here. So we can update our firmware and we should be good to go. All right, our firmware is installed. We now need to confirm it and that everything is complete. And now we have the new firmware. You'll notice we have a little bit of a different interface to enter our pin. Uh, we'll go ahead and enter that now. And we are back to having our device. We'll need to reinstall those apps. So again, this is going to reinstall the ability to interact with the Ethereum blockchain where that link token is that we wanted to interact with. Approve a couple more things. All right, and there we are. We have the app installed and we are good to go. We can now at this point interact with different applications, send and receive things on the Ethereum blockchain. But how do we see our account? Well, the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to add an Ethereum account. So we'll open up the Ethereum application on our device and this will use our seed phrase, those 24 words to generate a wallet address using our private key. So the seed phrase turns into the private key and that allows us to generate a wallet address. So here we have the account that we're adding. We can call it whatever we like. And now we have an account. If we go to accounts, we can see our account here. If we select our account, uh, we don't have any crypto to send. If we did, we could do that here. And again, something to remember, anytime you're sending crypto, what should you do? You should double check the address. And if it's a new address, you might want to send a very small transaction first. But if we needed to receive or buy crypto, we could do that here as well. Clicking on receive will display our address. We can check it here. And then we can also check it on our device as well. It's really nice how the device is completely separate from the computer. Everything is stored on the device and it just talks to the computer when it needs to. Uh, so this is your address and you can double check on your device. When you're done, you can click both. And from here, you're ready to use your Ledger hardware wallet.
All right, so with that, we've learned how to set up three different wallets, uh, a MetaMask wallet, a Trezor hardware wallet, and a Ledger hardware wallet. These will allow you to have self-custody of your assets. That means you are in complete control of your assets. You don't have anyone else that you need to rely on. But as Spider-Man was once told, with great power comes great responsibility. And that means that if you control your assets, you're responsible for them. There's no one to help you if you lose your seed phrase, if you lose your device and don't have a way to access your wallet. So keep that in mind. Those words that we recorded, those are the master key to your crypto assets. And you need to put them in a safe place where they are secure and that no one else will get to them. And maybe having them in multiple locations is a good idea, just in case something were to happen to the location where they were stored. And with that, you're fully ready to go and set up to be a self-custodian of your ERC-20 tokens. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to catching you in the next one.